Hello second year guitar players, just a recap of what we covered in Tuesday's lesson where we're doing a Count Basie style 12 bar blues, loads of swinging riffs uh, that were borrowed off famous sax players, a lot of it is playing off your C root with some smears in your third, the sixth or the low sixth and occasionally the high C. Okay? And it's more to do with the rhythmic phrase. Remember, each of these riffs can be played three times in the context of a 12 bar blues, because each riff lasts roughly four bars, so you're looping three times. And, uh, and it's like a pick and mix. You can start and mix them around a little bit to fill the 12 bars in interesting ways. So we've got um, four, we've got uh, seven riffs. Here's the first one C jam blues riff. In on the beat. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> from a famous Duke Ellington tune called C Jam Blues. If you wanted on the third version of that riff you could add a little chromatic thing instead. A chromatic run as a kind of full stop that phrase. Alt riff 1 is now going to have the same rhythm but use the 6th at the top of the um, chord. Notice the third time we play it, we always do something slightly different. We might just miss off a note, or we add some extra things to it to let it know it's the last time we're playing it. Okay. Um, this is uh, can be played to the rhythm of "Come on down to Duke's place" because again, it's from a famous kind of jazz tune. Slight mistake there. Come on down to Duke's place. Come on down to Duke's. that full stop at the end of it. Okay. Taking the riff now from a, a one o'clock jump, another Count Basie track, um, and it goes a bit like this. A little smear off six into seven on the D string there. that in there and it kind of acts a little bit like we're going it's letting the band know we're going to go back into another 12 bar it seems to anticipate that we're going to hang in the air whereas if it was the end of the song our final riff should be this using the chromatic run but this time with a high kind of C added and it gives it that final little accent okay uh, our fifth riff Nick from Charlie Christian who stole all of his guitar riffs off sax players and I think this is quite a tasty one, I like it, it goes like this. Oop. And again we're just looping the same riff quite a few times, makes it really hooky, stops in the listener's mind. Okay. Uh, our penultimate riff is where perhaps we're trying to mirror what a sax player and trumpet player might do towards the end of a jazz improvisation. They might play it together on a riff in harmony just to let us know it's kind of like the end of the tune. Okay, So it involves some double stops and um, they're all played pretty much off that C note, that A note there, our root and our lower sixth and it's just got a nice smear thing. And then we're jumping up. 12 and 13 at the end of it. And the last one. And the final one. We're putting that, which is kind of like a, a G 13th at the end of it. And we just kill it with that little C at the top there. And those two work harmoniously together because that gives us a C 6th. It also gives us a part of a, an F 7th uh, and it also gives us part of a, a D minus 7th and that just lets us know it's a full stop to get back to our root. And our final uh, riff has a little bit more of a almost uh, Chuck Berry feel to it. Uh, the, the notes individually 
okay, but you can kind of smear that a little bit. And we get up to that 8 and we're going to hang on that 8. A little kind of half bend on there so it's almost the natural third. You can even double stop them if you want. play that on this guitar which has such a high action you can probably play it slightly better and that's just a nice exciting way of kind of that could be the climax of your guitar solo just to give it that bit of energy at the end by getting up in the high register and you could tie in quite nicely with that other riff if you wanted practice those get them tight we'll put them in the camera on Tuesday